Hey everybody, welcome back. So a little bit ago, if you remember a company called Fun Creek Call, or Functional, Creative, and Colorful, reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to test their toughness resin. And I had just tested an ABS-like resin, and um, I kind of found it wanting, not very ABS-like, at least as compared to FDM printing ABS filament. And you guys all told me maybe I shouldn't be comparing it to FDM filament, maybe I should be comparing it to other resin. And um, it is tougher than other resin, and for that, that's a good thing. But they also just reached out to me and asked me if I would like to test their flexible resin. And it's going to be a tough it's going to be tough for me not to compare it to TPU because that is what I would be comparing it to. This is a resin that is completely flexible once it's done printing. It should be very TPU-like, I think. There are some special settings they gave me for it. You can see them on their Amazon webpage, and I'll go over them with you as well. They say it's a little bit more challenging than normal to print, and we're going to find that out, and we may try and print a number of different things for it and see if we can figure out how well it is, does it live up to what they claim, and um, what we can use it for. I am going to be using the Geetech $99 Alk-Aid printer to do this. I'm hoping that will, that will do it for me. My only other printer is my old, you can see back there with the red cover, my old Kitty Tech 5.5. S Shadow, which works great still, but you can't buy that printer anymore. So let's test it on the Alcade, since that is an inexpensive printer and you can still go buy one. As you can see, the VAT has a fairly fresh film in the bottom. I think there's only four, five, six prints on that film. So um, that's the one we're going to be using. And I am going to be using Chidu Box. I think it's version 2.1 or something like that is the slicer. So this is Box basic version 2.1. I have copied all the correct settings in. This is what we are going to print. It is just a small grommet that you would push into a hole in, you know, sheetrock or plywood or something like that just to plug a hole. And here you go. These are all the layer height is 0 0.50. No, it's 0 0.050, bottom layer counts 5, exposure time 8 seconds, um, bottom exposure time 80 seconds, and here are the rest of the settings, bottom lift distance 20, lifting distance 8, bottom lift speed 40, lifting speed 60, bottom retract speed 40, retract speed 60, and that is what we are going to be printing and the settings we are going to be using. I think I am ready to print. One thing worthy of note is Funcrecall does suggest that you should use only heavy supports with this. This part requires no support and I am not lifting it off the build plate. And that may be a mistake, but um, I really want a smooth outer surface on it. So let's see if it'll print with just the base of it directly against the build plate. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to pick my grommet. And I am going to say print, so our part is done. And a couple things worthy of note is I think this was probably not the best part because I think the walls are really thin. But also, it printed. And I expected to have more problems with this filament than this. And the first part I tried printed. Let's get it off of there. They say do not submerge it in alcohol. Use a painter's brush with alcohol to brush any remaining... Um, resin off of the part and then to submerge in water for five to ten minutes they to cure it. They say nothing about curing under light. So I'm going to try curing under light anyway and then put it in water or maybe brush it off, off with alcohol then put it in water then cure it with light after it comes out of the water. I can't think of any... they don't really give you any other guidance that I can tell. So let's get it off of there and let's let our plate drip a little bit. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. I have my little curing station set up. This is just a nail UV curing thing with a little UV power turntable. And I don't know how much this needs to be cured. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but um, very flexible. I mean, almost too flexible for what it is, but you know, I didn't know that. Let's, um, let's cure it a little bit. So here is the printed part. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get this to focus. 
Um, it turned out absolutely perfect. I mean, I can't imagine that I would have any issues with that. And um, like I say, it is probably not the appropriate material for this. We're pretty, pretty nice and firm where it's um, thick, but you can see how thin it is out here. It's very, very flexible. It's like TPU. In fact, that might be slightly more flexible than the TPU I typically use. But that printed super nice. Let's print something bigger. I'm, I'm digging this. That's nice. I like that. So my next thought was to print something thicker because I'm kind of curious as to how stiff this is going to be if it has any real thickness. So this is just something I picked up off Thingiverse. It's supposed to be like a tire for an RC car or maybe something you slip over a small flashlight to give it grip. Don't really know. Don't really care. But it's got about the kind of thing I'm interested in here. And um, yeah, I'm going to print that because it has such a tiny contact patch on the bed. And because when you get it um, down about in the middle of it, it's pretty thick. I thought it would be best to raise it, tip it slightly and put supports in it. And I just used the built-in supports in Chidu box. It said heavy supports. And All right, our tire is done. Let's get it out of there and have a look at it. I have to admit, I was honestly expecting to have more trouble with this filament than this. The way they represented it to me suggested that it might not be the easiest filament, or easiest, sorry, easiest resin in the world. The prejudice can't make myself stop doing that. But I was saying the way they presented it to me made it sound like it wasn't going to be the easiest resin in the world to print. But I sure haven't had that issue with it. So it's been soaking for a few minutes. And yes, I'm going to do this barehanded because the window of opportunity for me to die young has already closed. So let's get this out of here. Feels pretty clean. I don't feel any resin. See if I can just tear it off of that support. But there is our tire. And I don't know if that's focusing, but that's a I kind of like that. You know what? That would probably make a pretty decent tire for a little RC car. It's just enough squishy that it would probably have some grip. Yeah, that's, that's halfway decent. I'm going to print one more thing and then I think we'll take a look at all of them and um, we'll talk about it a little bit. I wanted to print one more thing. Well, actually two more things. We'll talk about that. But I wanted to print new caps, rubber caps, for my little dead blow hammer. A number of years ago I was into making 3D printed tools and this dead blow hammer was one I designed and made. And it has removable caps in case I crack or break one. You can just spin the caps off and spin new ones on. Easier said than done here. There we go. And um, it's filled with, um, can you hear it? It's filled with lead shot. And I actually made a second one that I never actually really finished. So I thought, well, maybe I'll put one of these caps on here and I'll make two rubber caps. So I have a hard cap on one end and a rubber cap on the other. But unfortunately, it looks like one of my caps failed. And that's something I want to talk to you about because while I don't think this is difficult resin to print, it's not as easy as just a standard resin. But I also think it's worth it. So let me get this off of here. Let me get my gloves on so y'all don't yell at me. And um, we'll see just how, why one failed. And I already know why one failed and we'll talk about that. But let me get this off of here and we'll see if it fits. And um, I'm really pretty impressed with this resin. But I do think there are some things to discuss about it that you may find of interest. And you can see I didn't fail originally, but this resin sticks to the FEP really, really well. And if you don't have a big raft, and sometimes even if you do have a big raft, it'll tear it right off. Also, another thing worth, worthy of note, I think, is because this resin sticks so well to the FEP, it takes a fair amount of force to pull it loose. And um, this Gitech Alcade printer, as much as I do like it, is not a heavy-duty printer. The parts are pretty lightweight. 
and I think it might not be the best printer for long-term printing of this type of filament. Had I realized that, I would have used my Kitty Tech Shadow 5.5. It has uh, dual rails. It's a much more robust printer than this one is. Okay, let's get this off of there. And we will see if I can rotate the camera without getting resin on the camera. I'm just going to drop these loose into the alcohol, but I'm not going to leave them in there very long. But, and honestly, my from what I've seen in my experiments, I think soap and water, you know, soap and Dawn dish soap would clean up after this stuff really pretty well. And let's just give that a quick bath. And we will um, we'll stick it in the water. I have the one good finished part cleaned and over there curing under the lamp. And here is the piece that um, stuck. And you can see it's still stuck on there. Um, this stuff really suctions itself down to FEP. And like I say, it takes a, a pretty good yank to get it off. And it tore it completely off all those heavy supports. So just something to keep in mind when you print this. You really do need a good FEP. And you need a machine built robustly enough that it can um, put that much force on it to yank it loose. So now that the printing is done and I've cleaned up and the printer is put away, let's take a look at these parts I printed and let's discuss them just for a minute. But let's take a look at the parts. Here is the tire that I printed. And I'm not sure how close I can get the camera to focus. But as you can see, it did a very nice job printing that, and even at that thickness, it's still flexible. But note how slowly, see if I can show you, note how slowly it returns to its original shape. It's not like TPU, which TPU returns quite quickly. This is a little slow to return to its original shape. It just feels more dense than, um, than TPU printed on an FDM filament, and that might just be the process resin just makes it more dense than 3D printing does. These little discs are one and a half millimeters thick. And I just kind of printed these because I wanted an idea of what a gasket might feel like. And one thing other to note about this filament is it's kind of got a grippy feel to it. It's not super smooth. It wants to grip anything that touches it. And um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Here's that, whoops, here's that first little grommet that I printed. And that came out really nice. And of course, that's super flexible because it's so thin. And here are some of the um, rafts and supports. This is from the failed one. And you could see the printer tore it right off of there. It stuck to the FEP film in the bed. And the printer just tore the rafts in half, trying to release it from the FEP. So again, you will need a little bit more robust printer, I think, if you're going to print this long term than the Gitech Alcade. Now, I'm not bashing the Alcade over that. It is a $99 printer. I don't expect anything built, built like a Mack truck. But if you're going to do a lot of this, I think I would recommend a more robust printer. And then here is that last hammerhead part I printed. And as you can see, I'm hoping you can see the threads came out just fine. And despite the fact that it's, you know, that's got to be a good 10 millimeters thick, 8 millimeters thick, you can see it's still, I can still squeeze it and deform it. And then it slowly goes back to shape. And it has that kind of, not sticky, just kind of a tacky feel to it. Not like, you know, really smooth, hard plastic would feel, or even TPU. And um, on the hammer, I tested, I printed it 2% oversized because I assumed it would probably shrink a bit. And um, there we go. So it fits on my hammer and it gives me a um, kind of a, a less marring if you discount where all the, all the, supports were a less marring type of surface. So to sum this resin up, it's not that terribly hard to print. You will need a good FEP sheet. You will need a little bit more robust normal than a lower end printer. I think if you're going to do it a lot, but I got to tell you something that just that for resin for me, this is pretty amazing. I can 
depending on what the chemical and UV resistance of this is, and I'm not, that's outside the scope of this video, I think, um, I'm really impressed with this. I think I can already think of lots and lots of uses for a resin like this. Anyway, I want to thank Fun Creek Hall for sending that out. Thanks to you guys for watching my videos. There will be affiliate links below, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.